Hi everyone and welcome back to another vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in as always and this is week two of our poster presentations. This week our topic is delegation so we have to do a 8 to 12 minute maximum um, poster presentation on delegation and how it relates to the role as a student and a newly qualified nurse like that transition process and sort of defining delegation, what the NMC says, what the whole policies, procedures, guidelines, all of that around delegation basically. Everything there is to know about delegation and how it affects patient safety and the trust and the organisation and you as a person sort of as a whole. I've already written my section and timed it, it's two minutes I know and it's only Tuesday. We started it yesterday but I am on it. I usually get it done, dusted, that's it, out the way, it's ready then. I just need to practice my bit and then we have to come together as a team and practice together and make sure our group are ready for the poster. And to be honest, I'm not gonna have time to do that until Thursday morning before the poster presentation. Oh, because today and tomorrow, so Tuesday, Wednesday, I am off and I have got a very exciting GP nursing student ambassador workshop program with Shiny Minds Coaching. It's going to be amazing. We have to go to York for it and um, I think it's sort of to build your confidence around like public speaking, leadership, management skills, all of that. That's going to be absolutely amazing and I will try and do some vlogs for it and let you all know how that goes. And I might do a separate vlog for that one actually because it's going to be too long-winded in this one I think. And on other news, so as you know, I've been doing this dissertation, not dissertation, ACP, for those of you that watch all of my videos. I've been doing this since December, since Christmas, when we had our CAT period, which is a period that we're off, but they set us work to do at home or revision workbooks and things to do, things online to do from home in the comfort of your own home. Don't have to go to lectures, don't have to go to placement. We have the whole of December to do this. And our ACP was launched. So I had a look at that, I knew my topic, I just had to work out my question and find the articles. I've been really stressed with this one, I've been really struggling with research. I'm good at database searching, researching that way, like finding things normally, but this has been tearing my hair out because my topic is, um, so basically I want to look into pre-exposure prophylaxis for the prevention of HIV in gay men but I specifically want to look at when they're taking it does it result in them having a reduction in condom use because they think they're safe from HIV so they don't worry as much about condoms if that makes sense and I think there's going to be a rise in other STIs this is just my presumption I think personally there's going to be other rise in STIs with the use of this and possibly more promiscuous behaviour. That's just my own opinion, my own sort of clinical judgments from working in sexual health. One of the clinics we work at is the LGBT centre and just hearing the comments and concerns and things that patients say in that setting is something I did pick up on was these patients aren't worried about sort of chlamydia, gonorrhea because you can just have some tablets and that's it, it's done, it's gone. But HIV, back in the day it was a life sentence, it's not anymore. Yes. We are overcoming HIV, guys. This is amazing. But there is a preventative pre preventative treatment for HIV now. So you take this daily tablet every single day. And if you have any risky sort of behaviours or if you have sex with somebody that is infected with HIV, it just reduces that risk massively, and that risk of transmission. And people are not getting HIV anymore and it works there's trials out there there's research out there on the effectiveness of it the research is really good into it have a look it's really good reading if you want to have a look at that um but yes so for my specific topic of condom use with it there's not much out there and i was really struggling with this i kept finding other research so there'll be prep in for hiv in sort of African women, there'll be PrEP for HIV in pregnant women, there'll be PrEP for HIV in sex workers, everything but gay men and condom use and how it affects or if it affects sort of sexual behaviours, that's what I want to look into. And there were, I was just oh, tearing my hair out, I couldn't find it, oh, I was really struggling. But then somebody made this comment, I mean I found some research, so I found I think six or seven articles initially and I thought okay yeah I could possibly use these 
So I found those, but I was struggling to find the final four and it was really tearing my hair out. So I was having an interesting conversation with somebody yesterday who said, you are physically allowed, legally allowed, to look at people's research and look at the reference list and sort of look through their reference list to get more articles for your paper. It's a thing called the snowballing or snowballing effect, something like that. And I was like, what? And they said, well, obviously you have to put it into your writing. So when you write up your methods section, this is what you did. You searched on Cochrane Library, blah, blah, blah. You used the snowballing effect. So just write it in because it is an actual term that you use in research. So I did that yesterday. Last night I spent hours searching and searching and searching and then I remembered what they said and I was like, let me just check the references. And I found some really good articles specific to sexual behaviours, condom use, gay men and prep. I've got my 10 articles, guys. Oh, that's a relief. Six months, six months it's taken me. And there, within a few hours, it's, it's done. I've got my 10 articles, but now, my next step is I need to critically, critically appraise every single article, which is the long winded bit, I think, because there's different tools to use for different types of research. So I've, I've now sectioned my research into sections. So the randomized control trials, I think I've got four of, I've got a couple of cohort studies. I've got ones that use surveys. I can't remember cross-sectional studies slash questionnaire survey studies or something like that. I can't remember. Oh my God, I'm really bad at research. Don't ask me anything about dissertation, please. Because <laughs> it's awful. I'm sure I'll get there though. So yeah, so I've, I've sectioned them off. I've printed off the tools for each one and I've put the tool with each one so that I can critically appraise every single one. I've done one so far because I thought, you know what, while I'm on a roll, let's just do one, get it out of the way and I'll feel so much better about myself. And I did, I feel so much better. Like a little weight has lifted from my shoulders, from my head. And I think, yes, maybe it's gonna be okay. I don't know. But yeah, just so you know, I hate research. I really, really sorry guys. There's just no, I just, I can't enjoy it. And I know we need it, it's really important for clinical practice, it's really important that we know where we're getting our evidence from, which is fine, I can do that, I like that, I like going out there and finding the evidence. I don't like writing about it, I don't like writing a systematic review, I don't want to be a researcher, and I don't want to do that as a job. <laughs> Compose yourself. So yeah, I don't like research, we have discovered from these three years, well done. But I have to do it, I have to get through it. Um, not bagging myself any good grade on this one i don't think i'm gonna guess possibly a c at a push with this one because my heart and soul is just not in it but i am gonna do it i'm hopefully gonna do it some justice to pass that's the main thing i need to pass and hopefully it'll be okay so today i have a train journey i'm going on my train at 12 o'clock i think i've taken all of my research with me and i'm gonna do it on the train journey there yeah two birds one stone that's how to do it guys <laughs> so yeah so i'm going to do that today and hopefully it's going to be okay once i've done that i can update you on my next stage of dissertation and yeah so that is it for now i shall let you know how it goes with the week and i'll post a presentation on thursday and hopefully it's going to be all right and a much better presentation and hopefully we get really good feedback to improve and build on our real presentation on um september see the 16th or the 23rd week one of those something like that but that's when our real post presentation is this is just practice ones so yeah so i'll see you for now and i shall see you on thursday so today is thursday and i just did not get a chance to do a before and an after vlog with my group for the poster which is a shame but i'm just going to do a little talk through so don't worry so the past couple of days i've had two days off and i had a workshop for the general practice nursing ambassador leadership program and to be honest we didn't know what to expect we weren't sure what we were getting ourselves into we didn't really know what was going to happen we knew that we had sort of a challenge and we had to go there with something we wanted to improve and build on and public speaking was my thing that's what I, what I wanted to gain from this and it's actually what everyone in that room wanted to gain from this was be confident be confident in public speaking and presenting and getting that impact out there 
So we went in and we, it was, I don't even know where to start because the past two days, well, it was a day and a little bit in the evening before. And these were just workshops to sort of build ourselves and deal with the emotions that we have whilst public speaking, like the anxieties, the fears, the little voices in the head and how to control those and lower them so that we can concentrate on our presentation and not let it affect us. And before I went to this workshop, I think I said this before in previous vlogs, but I have a massive fear of public speaking. I uh, really dread it. I don't look forward to it, but it's something I physically want to do. It's something I want to do. I want to be able to stand in a room full of people and inspire them motivate them and get my message across to those people in those seats listening to me is something I really wanted to do I have a massive fear of it and people think oh my god but you vlog and stuff like that and you you seem quite confident but actually I'm not this is just me at home with my camera in my the, my own comfort in my own skin but put me out on a stage talking in front of millions of eyes looking at me no it was a massive fear of mine I dreaded it but I wanted to do it and I wanted change in myself to be able to do that and guess what the impossible became possible I had no idea I mean I thought I was just gonna go and get the skills and tools to help me be able to sort of like body language and things like that to make me look confident but I never expected for the fear to be removed like I am cured that's really strange that is like massive I am cured and I have no fear and this is weird this is weird I don't know what they did to me in those workshops I don't know what happened but I'm not scared anymore I'm I've, I've turned it into excitement I'm really really excited to get up and talk in front of a room of people that fear's gone and I don't know how but it's magic and it's just the best feeling thinking you know what I can do this I can do this and I can do it well now now that, that fear's gone I can do it well so bring me back to the room today we had our post presentations and instead of fearing it and instead of the dread and thinking oh another post presentation I was excited I thought I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna present in front of the class and it's gonna be amazing because I'm not gonna have that fear holding me back anymore and yeah the nerves are still there obviously and that I think nerves are now a really good thing for me and it just shows that I care about what I'm talking about and that's okay but the fear that I had that was really holding me back has gone and I was able to stand today and present properly like I should and I think next week next post presentation next week again um, I'm going to be able to do the same thing and it was just amazing and I said to my friend did you notice a difference between last week and this week the way I was talking and things and she said there was a, like a massive difference so that's really really good that's a really positive so it just shows that the workshop and everything helped it's not just in my myself and my head but actually other people can see it as well which is big and it's going to be amazing and just on the back of all of this we have me and Kate have been asked to do a talk at a GPN conference I know, next month on the 3rd of July, I'm gonna be hitting the doctors, the qualified nurses, I'm gonna show how amazing student nurses are and I'm gonna get the minds thinking and I'm, I'm gonna make an impact so that they leave that room taking something away from what I say at that day, on that day. And I'm really, really excited. I can't wait, I'm not scared, I'm not nervous. I'm gonna go up there and smash it. So next week, just to save me doing a poster presentation vlog again, I'm going to do a different type of vlog next Sunday. So um, I know I was having a conversation with somebody on my channel in the comments on one of the last videos about placements and how to manage a placement that you don't particularly like, don't particularly get on with, and if you're really, really struggling. And I think that's a really, really good vlog to do because a lot of us have this. I've had this in my very, very first placement and I really want to talk about it because because it's massive and really important. So I'm gonna talk about that next week and hopefully it'll help you. But that's it from me for this week. I hope you have an amazing week. Go out there, smash it, face those fears like I have, and I'll see you next week.